Chevrolet was founded in 1911 when William Durant, who was a very colorful person in the automotive sector, to put it nicely, he could be viewed as an antagonist or a protagonist, depending on what story you're listening to. Anyway, he wanted to make an automobile company to gain a majority in General Motors. General Motors was a company that he founded. Rewind back to 1900 with Durant's own Durant Port Carriage Company of Flint, Michigan. Durant would also purchase Buick Motor Car Company in 1904. Durant would form General Motors in 1908 as a holding company. Buick was General Motors' first company. They would acquire Oldsmobile in November of 1908. Durant would also acquire other companies like Cadillac, Elmore, Welsh, Carter Car, Oakland, Rapid Motor Vehicle Company, Reliance Motor Company. Durant even tried to purchase Ford Motor Company, but they were $2 million short. Durant consequently over leveraged General Motors, making acquisitions that they couldn't really afford and was removed from the board of directors in 1910. At the direction of the bankers who backed the loans to keep General Motors in business. Which brings us to 1911. Durant wanted his job at General Motors back, so he created a cockamamie scheme to get back into General Motors by building a completely new company from the ground up. He co-founded Chevrolet with the Chevy brothers, Lewis and Arthur Chevrolet, who were both race car drivers. Lewis raced Buicks while Durant owned Buick. Durant wanted name recognition to sell cars. There were other investors that went in as well, like William Little, the maker of Little Automobile, Dr. Edwin R. Campbell. Chevrolet was established in Flint, Michigan. In five years' time, Chevrolet became so profitable that Durant was able to buy a controlling interest in General Motors. Just like a bad case of crabs, Durant was back, baby, and in 1918, they made it official. Chevrolet would merge with General Motors as a separate division, and Durant would become president of General Motors. In 1920, the post-war boom was over. Stock markets lost about 25% of their value and hundreds of thousands of businesses went bankrupt. Durant would start buying stock on margin in absolute secret. Six months later, Durant would lose $90 million. Durant was bailed out yet again, but it came with conditions this time. He had to resign immediately from General Motors. He would lose his controlling stake in the company. But even at 59 years old and unemployed, this would not be the end. Durant would rise up from the ashes like a cockroach after nuclear war to go back into the automotive industry, putting his name on it, Durant Motors. Durant Motors would last until 1933, being a casualty of the Great Depression. Durant was replaced at General Motors by Alfred Sloan, who grew General Motors into an absolute juggernaut of the automotive industry. Chevrolet used overhead valve engine configurations from almost the very beginning. They did have one engine that came before this engine family, which was a T-Head 6 and the car was called the Series C Classic 6. Chevrolet would produce it from 1911 through 1913 and then went to this four-cylinder to directly compete with the Ford Model T. In 1913, Arthur Mason would design an all-new power plant. The new engine was overhead valve design with exposed push rods and rocker arms, detachable cylinder head, these engines were small to mid-sized bore with long stroke. Consequently, meaning that these engines aren't very rev happy, the cylinders are cast in block with upper half crankcase with detachable cylinder head. Oil lubrication is splash lubrication with positive pump. Individual oil pockets for each connecting rod dripper sight feed on the dash. Later models might have done away with the sight feed. This information came straight out of the Chevy Baby Grand brochure from 1916. The main engine and connecting rod bearings are bronze backed Babbitt bearings or poured bearings. And according to the brochure, you'll be good for several thousand miles, not a hundred thousand miles, not 10,000 miles, several 
10,000 miles. The ignition system was designed to give good even spark at all times, regardless of engine speed, used as an updraft carburetor. Introduced in 1913 and would be used until 1928, 171 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line four, 2.8 liters it's good for anywhere between 24 to 35 horsepower 2200 rpm this is an estimate 100 pound feet or 135 newton meters around 1200 rpm with a bore of 3.79 inches in a stroke of four inches years this engine was used was between 1913 through 1928 this was chevy's bread and butter engine it could be found in literally just about everything from 1913 through 1928. In 1917, Chevy would stroke the 171 to 224 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line four, 3.67 liters. It's good for 37 horsepower at 2000 RPM. This is just an estimate, 105 pound feet or 142 Newton meters at 1200 RPM with a bore of 3.79 inches, but with a stroke of 5.25 inches. Years this engine was used, 1918 through 1922, it could be found in the FA and FB series. And I know 37 horsepower doesn't sound like a whole lot, but this is long stroke power. It's just different. And the best analogy that I can give you is 35 degrees in Pittsburgh in the wintertime is comfortable, but 35 degrees in Florida is like cold to your soul. It, it's a totally different experience. Same number, different experience. In 1929, Chevy would build an all-new 6 to try and one-up Ford because Ford was still building four-cylinders at that point in time. Chevy would build an all-new 6 at the price of four with their new Stovebolt 6 engine design, which was also overhead valve. But as they say, that's another engine episode for another day. Or since it's one that's been covered already, you can go and watch it after this episode if you wish. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1914 Chevy or a 1928 Chevy or a 1920 Chevy? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1916 Chevy or 1927 Chevy or 1923 Chevy. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. I don't say that for self-worth. I just say that if you post a comment, I will definitely read it. If you have Facebook, we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences. Anything car related is shareable on there. If you'd like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, drop me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at a lost and forgotten email webprovider.com. Until next time, toodaloo!